support study designs, we have three different study designs that we use. And they're based on when we collect the data and how we follow up with subjects. So the very first study design we have is prospective. Anytime you hear something is prospective, it means in the future, looking forward, right? Looking forward is prospective. So where do we start our prospective study designs? Our prospective study designs start with us figuring out exposures in the present. So remember, all cohort study designs start with the exposure of interest. In prospective study designs, what that means is if we were doing this research and conducting it today, I would go out and go find a whole bunch of people, let's say a random sample of incoming mama students, and ask them a whole bunch of questions about their exposures. Then in prospective study designs, what we do is take those people and follow them up in the future to see whether or not they get our health outcome or our disease. The D stands for disease. So we collect things about the exposures in the present, where we currently are, and then we wait over time and go follow up with them in the future and ask them whether or not they got our health outcome of interest. The next type of study design is retrospective, and retrospective means looking backward, looking in the past. And so in retrospective study designs, we still start with the exposure, but we go find our exposures in the past. In order to do this, we typically need really good secondary data records on people's histories. So um, there's a couple different uh, sources of this that might be really good. For instance, if you're in the military and we have your military records, um, in countries that have really good electronic health records with nationalized healthcare systems, they have really good past data on people. But what we do is we go into your past and find some kind of record of your exposures. And then we are in the present and we ask you today and assess you for whether or not you got the disease today. So we still are starting with our exposures, but we're finding them via secondary data and records. And then we see whether or not today in the present day you have the disease. The final one of these, the historical perspective, also known as the ambispective, looks both backwards and forwards to understand the situation. So in historical perspective studies, what we do is we go find data about the exposure in the past. We then also collect data about the exposure here in the present. And we follow you into the future to see if you get the disease sometime in the future. So we have at least two different data sources um, for exposures. One of them going to be records. The other one we're going to collect data in the present. And then we follow you through and collect eventual data in the future on your whether or not you got the disease. Each one of these still starts with exposures and then follows up to see if the person got the disease. It's just when in the timing that occurs. So as you can see, prospective studies use primary data most commonly. Most prospective studies use primary data exclusively. We collect information about your exposures now, and then we follow up with you and collect data on you in the future. These tend to be very time intensive as a result. They tend to be very costly. Because if you think about it, a lot of times when you're thinking of diseases we want to follow up on, they can take a really long time to develop. For instance, if you were doing a study on lung cancer and we want to know whether or not uh, vaping causes lung cancer, we enrolled you in our study now. Typically speaking, lung cancer doesn't show up if you're smoking cigarettes until about 40 years. So we'd have to find people who vaped now and follow them for 40 years into the future, which means it's very, very, very costly as far as people and time and following up with people. Now, retrospective studies use a combination of primary and secondary data as well as historical perspective. Both of these past exposures back here typically rely, well, they have to rely on secondary data. Right? We have to have some type of secondary data available to us to establish whether or not you were exposed. However, they also combine that 
with, typically speaking, primary data for these elements of the study. So it's a combination of secondary data for stuff that's the historical part, and then primary data for the stuff that's happening today. It's a lot quicker if you have good records to do a retrospective cohort study um, compared to a prospective cohort study. However, it can be really hard to find really good records and therefore you don't see these as often. So those are our three study design. Prospective study designs, where we, look, we follow you into the future. Retrospective, where we go into your past, look at what you were exposed to, see whether or not you have the disease today. And then historical perspective, which combines the prospective and the retrospective by looking into the past for exposures, collecting exposures now, and then following you through to see if you get the disease in the future.